What's up, everybody? I have some new thoughts on Star Trek Picard Season 3 and some other things to say. First, I want to say that I've moved all of my Star Trek content. This will be, I think, the, I think this might be the last video I make on Evil Spectrum 3. As you guys know, I have multiple YouTube channels, 70 million views, um, but I'm moving all Star Trek content to the Star Trek-specific YouTube channel here. So um, if you're on Evil Spectrum 3, make sure you come over to Star Trek Late Night, which will be my new Star Trek channel. Uh, that way I can separate it from my gaming streams and the wrestling stuff and everything. Obviously, this will be a very small channel at, at first. Hopefully, it will grow a little bit here or there. We'll grow up a little bit of a core of an audience. And that way we won't burden all the other people, the thousands of people that don't watch Star Trek with my Star Trek stuff. Um, so this will be a tiny little channel to start and hopefully it will grow. And hopefully, I'll, you know, I'll have lots of content to talk about. I don't know. But I, I want to first say this. I am concerned about the fact that I have so much to look at in this trailer, and we're not going to see the show till February. I am really concerned about that. And the other thing I want to say is I actually love the trailer. I know that there's been a lot of people that are like, oh, God, it looks dark again, and the trope of the bad guy villain. I think a lot of this stuff is a red herring for something else that's going on. So I'm fine with that. And by the way, I love the trailer. I actually like the way the villain acts. Uh, but uh, but I'm a sucker, right? Like, I was duped before. Like, put it this way, with J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams' Star Trek Into Darkness is one of the best Star Trek trailers that I've ever seen. I was so hyped for that movie. I thought Benedict Cumberbatch was phenomenal. I mean, the voice of like, I will walk over your cold corpses, and stuff is exploding everywhere. But the only thing that I didn't like was, well, okay, Eric Bana just played Nero as this bad villain guy who's doing bad guy villain things, and now here comes Star Trek Into Darkness, and, and apparently Benedict Cumberbatch is bad guy again. Bad guy does bad things, and he seems like Khan, like he's going to be Khan, and he was Khan. So it was like, you know, I understand it. I, I, I'm tired of it too. I'm tired of the bad guy villain. But you know what? Co even though Benedict Cumberbatch was phenomenal and he had some phenomenal lines, Star Trek Into Darkness was not very good. You know, it was like a 6 out of 10 movie. I thought 2009 Star Trek was maybe a 7 out of 10 movie. I thought that was a 6. And I thought the Star Trek uh, Beyond was maybe a 7 as well because it was more Star Trek, but it was low key. And again, it was bad guy villain. Bad guy doing bad thing. Got to stop bad guy at the end. And, you know, and sometimes when they don't, unfortunately, there's just too much of that. But what I will say about Star Trek Picard season three is um, Amanda Plummer. I love her lines. I, I'm excited for this. And all I'm saying is that I've been excited before for a trailer that I thought was good. I think this trailer is good. The only thing I wish is that maybe the Star Trek TNG uniforms were back a little bit more with the with the colorful colors and things weren't as dark, you know, because, again, I just feel like a lot of other people that there, there is a darkness that I can't deny, which I don't like. But at the same time, you know, th like this looks like a scene from the original Star Trek movies, like the Klingon bridge or something from, you know, any of the Star Treks from before, uh, the, the original movies, a scene from a Klingon uh, bird of prey or something. Um, but there's just lots of darkness. You know, this is the uh, this is uh, the Titan, right? Look at how dark this bridge is. Let me give it to you in real time. Look at that. That's the real trailer right here. That's the actual trailer. Look at how dark this is. So I, I, I wish that it was like that, a little brighter. You know, it's just a little too dark. And, and, and then it just seems like, look, even right here, what is this? I mean, dude, look at, this is the regular, look at how dark that is. It's so darkly lit. I mean, maybe the ship has been, you know, uh, the ship is running on emergency power or something right here and they've been taken out and they're on life emergency life support. The lights have gone out. So I don't know, maybe, but it just seems like a lot of darkness, even here. Why is this so dark? This is really dark. And maybe it's my monitor. I'm looking at my screen. This is very dark. You know, but if it looked like this, you know, this would it'd be a lot better if it looked like that. And maybe she had more redder. Like, I, they're going for these darker tones, you know? And I, I don't know, and which is fine because it's goofy to have these bright colors. But there's just... I, I, I do admit there is a darkness, and I know that people are worried about that. So the other thing we're going to get into here is 
and I'm going to make a separate videos on this. Lore and Moriarty were shown in this video, or what we think is lore. Based off the comments and the interactions of Brent Spiner in the panel, and based off the cameo video that Daniel, um, uh, what is this, Daniel Lewis, or I forget his name now, who's the actor that plays Moriarty? Damn it, I remember I loved him, in, I loved him as Moriarty back in the day. And remember, I grew up with Star Trek TNG. When I was about four or five years old, that's when Star Trek TNG hit the air. Me and my father watched the original series together so much, but we watched really watched TNG together. TNG was my thing. I loved the original series as well, and of course the original series movies. And Star Trek The Next Generation is my favorite television show ever of all time. I will take it, like bury me with the DVDs. I love the show. Unfortunately, my life is going to be, hey, I had some kids. I was a father. I had a successful YouTube channel for about eight years or ten years. But in the end, I, I really wasn't much of anything. But I'll tell you, I love Star Trek. <laughs> I mean, it seems like that's my life, unfortunately. Um, I mean, or fortunately. And I and I wish it was the future. And I wish we were in a better place. And, you know, I, I wish that... And, and that's why, like, I don't want... That's why I love TNG so much. Because it felt like they were so evolved. They still had problems. But not the problems that we have quite. And watching them solve things and work together and it was just a great show I love it and to this day I love it and my wife I'm so lucky that my wife loves it my wife who's three years younger than me you know when I was when I met my wife I, I was you know what 24 years old and she was 21 years older she was 20 and I was 23 that's what it was and most girls that I had met didn't you know they knew star uh, they knew of Star Trek but they didn't like it that much or, or like it at all and by accident, I think it was six to eight months into our relationship, by accident, you know, she had just brought up that, yeah, I love Star Trek. I watched it with my dad all the time, she said. And she knew the episodes. She had forgotten a lot of it, but she had watched it a lot as a kid and probably hadn't revisited it since she was, you know, in her teens. So me and her watch it all the time now and since we met. I mean, not like, I'm just very lucky. But so I think Moriarty... I think Moriarty is just a big distraction. I think that we're I think we're going to find out that Lore isn't Lore. I think we're going to find out that he's another soon uh, android. Um or, you know, so that so Moriarty back when Mor in the episode of Moriarty we find out that hey, listen, we need to create somebody who's capable of taking on data. You know, e so we're going to go on the holodeck and create Moriarty, somebody who could actually beat data. So I, I'm wondering if that they use him for a distraction against lore or against whatever lore is. And it's like a brief scene. I, I almost think it's a brief scene. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it really is the real lore that's... Flo I mean, the real Moriarty that's been floating around in the, ho the, the holodeck thing in space or wherever they put him. I forget where. Um, maybe. Or maybe it's just they went... Well, remember, remember what Moriarty did. You know, let's create Moriarty who can uh, defeat, you know, Lore. And maybe we can escape out of here while he distracts him or something. So maybe that's what they do. I don't know. But also, I don't think Lore is Lore. Because why Why would they give this away? But also, Lore it has regular human skin. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he, he's got a little bit of silvery paint on, but human-y skin. So my thing was, well, maybe he's a... a Maybe he's taking people's real skin to use or something and he's sick. Um, or maybe he's not lore. Maybe um, maybe he's not lore at all. Maybe he's uh, somebody else. Maybe he is lore B4. Maybe they, they took B4's body from the cryo thing or whatever and uh, somebody inserted Data's mind into him before. Remember they said it didn't work? Oh, we tried to put Data's mind in before it didn't work. And what if we found out that, well, it did work, and Lore took him away, or who knows what it is. And Data's really alive, and I don't know. But maybe it's neither of those things, and maybe it's not Lore. Maybe it's a new robot. It's a new cybernetic, soon-created, and maybe maybe it's the one after Data. So we find out that soon created, yet soon succeeded. We just didn't know it. So there's B4, there's data, there's B4, there's data, and then there's lore, and now there's this one. 
that we find out about. So it's not even lore. So Jordy is like, lore. But Jordy just thinks it's lore. It's not lore. It's another, and that's why he doesn't look like lore. He looks older and all that stuff. And it could also be explained that Dr. Soon, you know, made him more his age. So after he made Data, B4, and, and everybody, you know, he made this. Or who knows? But I, I think there's something up with these. I think the Moriarty is a small little cameo thing that's going to happen at some point just as a fun thing and they can throw it in the trailer. I think that this is not 100% lore and something is up there. And then I also think that we're in for multiple other surprises because if these are the surprises that they were willing to send out, you know, over the trailer, what else is there? But again, my concern with, and, and here's the other thing, I, I feel like a lot of people aren't giving Terry Metalis the credit. Or, or the not the credit because who knows what he can do with this, but my point is the um, the benefit of the doubt, the benefit of the doubt to Terry Metalis, right or Metalis? I don't know how Terry says his last name, and I think it's Metalis, but I I'm sorry if it's wrong. Um, I have I have I've written letters, I've written emails, I've begged. I never wanted to be a writer. I never really wanted to be a writer. I never really wanted to be work on things like that. I, I never thought I was good enough to do that. But with Star Trek, man, I've got so many ideas and so many things that I've written that I've never shown anybody ever. And I just kind of use them for my own thing. Um, I love the show. I love the shows. I live and breathe these shows. And when I'm bored, I write episodes. I don't know why. They're just for me. I know that I'll never find anybody to read them and I'll never be hired by anybody anyway, so it doesn't matter. By the way, I'm wearing my Picard shirt. Uh, but I have so many ideas. I'm, I'm a pretty good idea person. You know what I mean? I'm not the greatest at a lot of things, but I'm a, I'm pretty good at, at ideas. And I'm really good at delivering some basic ideas and outlines of things and then letting other people who are great at writing uh, write them out. You know, So I'm good at that. And I like doing that. And, and I feel like I'm seeing a lot of things that I would like to see or that I would like to or that I would have liked to do. And I think that some people don't understand that Terry Metalis is more of a fan. And he's, I mean, he's a professional. He's a, I believe he's a writer. He's a director. He's able to produce. He's a, he's a professional in the, in this area, but not just that he's a fan of Star Trek. He did great things with 12 monkeys, the series. It's been really good. You know what I mean? Like pretty, it's been pretty good. It's a series that I wasn't even that necessarily that interested in. I love the movie, the original 12 Monkeys movie. Oh, man. And now that, you know, I, I've, uh, now that I'm fairly unemployed at this point, um, I have a lot of time to think about these things, I guess, while my kids are running around upstairs on top of me. Um, but no, I, I, I just think that they, they should really, people need to understand. A lot of people don't understand. They don't know that, like, they don't, they don't put two and two together that, listen, Terry, Terry did not, Terry was, a, Terry worked on the first two episodes of the second season. And those are the best episodes, other than, like, a few moments, right, with um, John Delancey and, 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 and certainly at the end. And one of the reasons why things work with the original cast better is because the, the characters are so flushed out that when you see them on screen, for the most part, you accept them. Even if they're acting a little bit out of character at times, you still accept them. But when you're watching new actors interact with Picard, it just doesn't seem right. You know, JL and all this other stuff from What's-Her-Face. And they're swearing and they're angry or they're stupid or their science makes no sense. God, it's horrible. Raffi and the doctor, whatever her name is, and everybody, just awful, just really bad, like bad. The actress is wonderful, but the but the content that they the characters that they are, I hate them. I actually hate them. And by the way, if, if you guys are recasting for Data in the movies, give me a call. I've always wanted to be Brent Spiner. Thanks very much. Just a selfless thing. Sounds like Data in the episode on TNG. I hate this. Star Trek Generations. That's Generations, yeah. It's Generations. It is revolting. Sounds like he hates it. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, you know, like, and, and I mean, like, I always thought Picard was a little bit out of character in First Contact. 
But even though First Contact was a little bit over the top, I still enjoyed it because it was Star Trek TNG. And I always thought, listen, it's the movies. They're turning the volume up a little bit. We'll always have the TV show. So, you know, that's it's not too bad. I, I, I did worry a little bit. And I'll give you the example. When, I mean, for God's sake, listen, pa Patrick Stewart, he's got a scene where he's a, he goes he goes crazy. And we're always so used to Patrick Stewart being calm. But that scene with Lily in Star Trek First, Enterprise, uh, First Contact, that's the first time where I said to myself, man, they're all out of character a bit, you know? But there is a bit of an excuse for it because Picard was assimilated by the Borg. He's going through an emotional trauma that's a little bit different, you know what I mean? So maybe this makes sense, right? So you can kind of explain it. It's a huge trauma that no one is... It's un, an unbelievable trauma. But when he starts acting like Captain Ahab and all these other things, and he's like, Jean-Luc, blow up the damn ship. No! No! And I will make them pay for what they've done. Like, he sounds like a goddamn villain. They assimilate our worlds. We fall back. The line must be drawn here. No father, and I will make them pay for what they've done. It's like, whoa. Does that sound like Picard, does that sound like Picard or a goddamn villain to you? And then Worf. Later, earlier, Worf is on the bridge with him. He's like, if you were any other man, I'd kill you where you stand. Get off my bridge. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, and people loved First Contact for the most part. The casual fans loved First Contact. Even the longtime Trek fans loved First Contact. So, you know, but even as a kid, I loved First Contact as well. I mean, it was 96. I was 12, year, 12 or 13 years old, 13 years old. I've been watching Star Trek my whole life as a kid, which it felt like a long time, but it really wasn't, right? But as a 13-year-old, I, I really loved it. But but even in the movie theater, I did think, like, like what the hell? Like It's like, you know, Picard was over the top. Worf was like, I'll kill you where you stand. You know, Data's having an orgasm. I mean, it was a, it was it was different. But you know, is it, and therefore if this show is a little bit like a movie, I would love it if if this show is able to sort of be like the fourth or the fifth rather, the fifth TNG movie that wraps it all up. Because you don't I don't believe you really need to wrap up the television show. The television show was wrapped up in all good things. That, you could just watch all good things and go to sleep happy. That was Star Trek The Next Generation. I'm so happy. But if you watch the movies afterwards and you started, you know, feeling a little bit let down or, you know, a little too dark about it, you know, and then Picard season one and two, Jesus, you want to talk about dark? I mean, spoiler alert, but Picard's mother hanging herself and stuff, like, good Christ. I'll admit that it was emotional watching the kid and the mother and this trauma that Picard had. And it was, you know, a story that if that story was in some other show would have been impactful and it would have been powerful. And it, and it was. I almost cried. I really did. But, but it didn't, at no point did I really believe it was the Star Trek at all. But it was Patrick Stewart. I mean, it should have been called... Like, Patrick Stewart could have been playing a doctor in his old age, reliving his trauma, and that could have been it. And that could have been a show called Dr. M Dr. Manning. I am Dr. Manning. And, 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 the, and this is the story of his life or something. And it would have been, I would have felt pretty much liked it. But because it was Star Trek, Picard, I mean, it was like, dude, I want to kill myself. I don't remember Star Trek ever making me want to kill myself. I'm not even kidding. I'm sorry to be... I'm just telling you honestly. Star Trek Picard Season 2 made me want to kill myself. Like, I was already kind of depressed about my whole situation in life and things that are going on. And I'm watching the thing I love the most ever, Star Trek. And I've seen Discovery and how terrible that is. But at least I can just go, whatever, this is atrocious, but uh, whatever... I love, by the way, Enterprise, I love Star Trek Enterprise more than ever now. Because, wow, is that much more Star Trek than any of this. But Star Trek Picard Season 2, good lord.
if you've ever wanted to watch people die and hang yourself and and feel like miser miserable and hate yourself and hate your life, Star Trek Picard season two will do it for you. They'll talk about like how everybody's racist in the world and this time is terrible. Um, they'll talk about just the like ice, like the earth were terrible people. Like they'll talk about Picard's mother hanging herself for like eight episodes. And then in the end, Q will die. So he put them all through this big trial for what reason he's dying, I guess. What? Um, that Girardi person is the Borg queen person looks ridiculous. The Borg are now, we're going to work with you and check with people before they're assimilated. Dude, it is <sighs> the amount of stupid in season two of Picard is un believable like it is not only not star trek to me and not only bad bad ba maybe it is star trek but it's bad it's bad 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 star trek but the one thing i can say is it started out okay kind of i didn't love it but i thought it was pretty good the first two episodes i was kind of into it i was like huh this is actually kind of all right first couple episodes and guess what? Terry Metalis worked on those episodes. And then he said, okay, here you go, Akiva Goldsmith and all you other writer people that no one's ever heard of. Not Akiva, but the other people. I'm going to do season three because they already think that this is a failure. So I'm going to go do season three and try to make something for everybody. And as soon as he was out of the picture, it got awful. And granted, COVID didn't help. And I... No disrespect to anybody who wrote episodes and wrote things and worked on the show and put their hard time, you know, work into it. I feel terrible to say these things because I know it's art that people worked on and the actors and everybody who put themselves, you know, in danger during COVID. They didn't know what was going on. But I refuse to lie. I refuse to lie. I appreciate the effort and that Star Trek is back and that Picard is back in a way, but... It is just, all I can tell you is that, I'm sorry, I don't want to be a mean fan or an old fan, angry, whatever, but Picard season one and two mostly made me miserable. And I am going to watch the third season. And if it's bad, I'll never watch these seasons ever again. But I will say this one positive thing. The opening season of Picard season one, Love the opening episode for the most part, some of it. I don't like the way that the people's language, they talk like kids nowadays. In Star Trek The Next Generation, they had a way of speaking that felt futuristic because they spoke well together. You know, in Star Trek Picard, they're like, I know, right? What a moron. Like, he needs to chill. So why are people talking like that? Do they not know that, like, what are you doing? After World War III and, and Earth almost being destroyed, people, you know, started talking a different way. And then certainly once we got to Starfleet, Star Trek, and the next generation, you know, and the evolved sensibility. You have a more evolved sensibility. Commander Data has taken a dump on the bridge. Commander Worf will join you. No. Um, but so, it's just a... Uh, it's disappointing to see those things missed out on. So, again, I am very optimistic for this season. I know that Terry Metalis is different. He's going to give it an honest try. I'm not a big Deep Space Nine fan. I know that it's one of the best of Star Trek's, or at least people say that. I, I like Deep Space Nine. I get chills when I hear Deep Space Nine, the theme, just like I do TNG and other things, because it reminds me of the 90s and being a kid and watching it. Star Trek The Next Generation reminds me of my parents and, and watching it with them, and loving it as a kid, and now loving it being older. Star Trek Enterprise reminds me of the early 2000s and watching Star Trek back on TV again and, and, and actually finding out that I liked Enterprise when I at first didn't think I liked it, and then I did like it, and I loved it. Now it's one of my favorite series. Um, and it reminds me of that. 
And Star Trek Deep Space Nine reminds me of being over my friend's house after my father had died. And my friend's father and him watched Deep Space Nine all the time. So it reminds me of hanging out with them because it was always on in the background while we were doing something, playing video games or whatever. And uh, just Star Trek is just comforting to me. Love it. Voyager. I love all the originals. TOS, the movies. And, and certainly TNG, the movies, aren't the best. I actually like Nemesis. A lot of people didn't like Nemesis. I actually really love Nemesis. Um, you know, the, I think now when I watch Nemesis, it gets a little boring at times for me for some reason. But I did like Nemesis. In fact, I thought that the crew was most like what they were like on the TV show in Nemesis. If you actually watch them in Nemesis, they are everybody behaves much more like themselves uh, from the TV show. So even though Star Trek Nemesis got a, uh, you know, not the best, you know, reviews and dark and people didn't like whatever, I thought they were all very much in character. I think Picard became a little more somber and uh, defiant a bit because he wanted, really because Patrick Stewart wanted him to be, but because, you know, his crew was leaving, he was getting older, and now maybe he was kind of having a midlife crisis at the age of 60, you know, that sort of thing. So that kind of made sense to me. But everybody else behaved very, very much kind of safe. They all kind of played their parts safely. Um, you know, except for Brent Spiner, who got to play two roles and like, you know, the special needs B4 uh, Android and and also play Data. And, you know, uh, Tom Hardy got to play Picard's evil version of him. Um and I still think that if they had done the original idea of where they went to a alternate universe where there was two of everybody, I think that would have been interesting where they could have done like, um, you know, they're in an alternate universe where maybe the mirror universe and there's the evil Picard and evil Riker and they're facing themselves in a mirror universe. I think that could have been very interesting, but they sort of went with this other thing instead, I guess. And, whatever. Anyway, um, I, I just back to this, I know I'm bumbling around, but I'm just worried that I'm worried about the darkness, but I love this trailer. I really do. I, I don't, the people that are saying they don't love this trailer. I don't know how you don't. Now I'm telling you if the show comes out and it's bad, I will admit like, man, that trailer was such a BS, but this trailer has me as excited as the Star Trek into darkness trailer had me. Problem is, In a Darkness turned out to be kind of crap. Well, so I'm hoping this does not turn out to be that way. I like the over-the-top villain because I think there's more to the show than just this. But I love the idea that we, that we might be getting some mind games, some kind of big sort of surprise that's coming. Um, I almost thought Armis was coming back. I watched a scene in this trailer where Deanna says... The ship is in, is clouded by darkness and filled with complete darkness or something. She says something like that, right? And in my head, I was like, why are all these villains coming back and all these people? And I started thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, what if, it, what if, it's, what if it's Armis? I mean, like, you know, because remember Picard and them, they left them marooned on the planet after he killed Tasha Yar. And Picard says, I'm not taking you anywhere. You know, and Armis found a way off the planet eventually. Because I always said that. They just left him here. What happens when another ship lands? I want you to take me with you. Dude, how how amazing would it be if it were Armis? The problem with Armis is he kind of was stupid, right? Because Picard would, could, was easily like, where would you go? I would take you to take blood. And Picard's like, okay. And then Picard basically just treats him like a infantile uh, teenager. And it's like, haha, I tricked you. And guess what? We're not taking you anywhere. And they beam away. You know, and Armis is angry. Dude, I start... And because all these people are coming back, I was like, you know what no one would see coming? Goddamn Armis. <laughs> like, I, like, I kind of said it as a joke. But if you made Armis a little smarter, maybe, he doesn't even have to be smart. He just has to be insane. And he already he kind of is. Right, he's a super evil, dark thing that they left on that planet. So when when Deanna says, "I feel like the ship is complete darkness and you know evil or something," basically, 
and 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 you remember she was the one that was with Armis, so he would really really want to get revenge on Picard and on uh, Deanna, right? So anyway, I'm not saying this is what's happening in the show. I certainly don't believe this is what's happening, although I kind of think it would be pretty pretty kind of cool in a way. Um, but you know, you could see why he would really be after them, and maybe he was he was he'd be using all of these people, but I just think it's too smart for him. So I don't know what's going on, but it would be funny if Armis was <laughs> That's the reason is Armis. And uh, there's been people who think, who is she? You know, who is she? Why does she want to go after Picard so bad? Is she the daughter of somebody? You know, uh, is she the daughter of like Ruafo from whatever? Is she the, is she another cl like clone Romulan thing that's going on? I mean, would, would they really do that trope again? Maybe if it's only for an episode or two and there's a bigger story going on. See, I think that there's multiple layers happening here and I don't know what they are. Um, other people thought that the aliens were, were back from that episode with the clicking where they were abducted and like their parts were sawn into pieces and whatever those clicky aliens were back and something was up with them and they were doing something. I don't know. So I don't know. There's a lot of theories out there, but my worry is that this show doesn't come out until February. And by the time it comes out, I'm worried that I'm going to have built up this show to be something it's not. Or that I'm going to build up multiple things to be things that they're not. Or that I'm going to see the trailer so many times that these scenes are going to just stick out wrong to me. I, I, I'm very concerned. I, I really, like, if I could plead with Paramount, it would be, my God, please, for the love of God, release this show earlier than February. Oh, like, I mean, I would think this is coming out in November. It's not coming out in November, and it's not coming out in December, and it's not coming out in January. It's not coming out till February. And I know that guys like Robert Meyer Burnett, Burnett has actually said that he thought it was good. He may or may not have seen it. I don't know. He may have seen something, and he says it's good, and he didn't like the first two seasons, just like I didn't like them, and I wanted to like them desperately. I desperately wanted to like them. The idea that there's there's a couple the I never I liked all the movies. I like all the next generation movies. I like all the next generation shows, even the bad episodes, I like them. I don't like Picard season 1 and 2 really. 90% of it I don't like it. If it, it, I feel sick to my stomach over that. It's the smell, Mr. Anderson. I'm saturated by it. Sorry. How great was Agent Smith in The Matrix? Basically doing um, Carl Sagan. It's one of the best villains, besides Khan and a couple other villains. Um. Anyway, I'm babbling on because I just, I can't, and, and dude, are we really, we're going to have to do this for, till what, February? We're going to be doing this? breaking down things that come... I mean, I'm just... I can't handle this. Like, this is going to take years off my life. And imagine if this isn't good. Can you imagine if this is not good? If this is a 6, 5, 4, or, or worse? Like, I'm trying to think... Like, I, I would give... Like, I think Generations, Star Trek Generations, is like a 7.5 or a 7 out of 10. Probably something like that. Maybe first contact's better, like a like an eight. I think first contact's an eight out of ten, maybe. I think insurrection is a seven out of ten. You know, I think nemesis is like a seven point five out of ten. I think Star Trek: The Undiscovered Country is like an eight point five out of ten. Wrath of Khan is an eight point five, maybe nine. The Voyage Home is an eight out of ten. Those are the those are my kind of ratings around for my Star Trek movies. And then I think like, you know, I love all of them though. There is no movie, even Star Trek five. I'd probably give Star Trek five the worst rating. I'd probably give it a six out of 10, but even in that six out of 10 score, there are things in that movie that are wonderful. Star Trek five. So 
I think Star Trek Into Darkness is a 6.5 out of 10 as well. I, and I like watching it kind of, but it's so bad though at the same time in ways that it's like, what? But I think Star Trek 2009 is a 7 out of 10. I think Star Trek Beyond is maybe a 7. So those are my scores of Star Trek movies. And I'm not scoring the TV show because it would be much higher. But those are my movie scores for Star Trek. And so if this Picard, season 3, can be as good as a Star Trek The Next Generation movie, I think that would be satisfying enough, right? If I can get a 7, that's a safe... Like, okay, this was, it was good enough. But if it's a six or below, it's like, all right, well, this, I'll never watch this series again. Six or below, I'll never watch it again. Seven, I'll watch it, but I'm sure I'll kind of think, man, it could have been a little better. But I'll tell you something. If this Star Trek season three of Picard is a 7.5 or an 8.5 or an 8, well then, man, that go then it goes into the rotation of the top movies for me: Wrath of Khan, Undiscovered Country, Voyage Home. All the TNG movies, I'll watch them all. I'll watch all the Star Trek movies, but you know what I'm saying? Like I really like. I find myself if I ever if I had to skip, if you forced me and you said you have to skip a few Star Trek movies, and I I was forced to. I would definitely watch two. I'd watch three. I'd not four. I'd watch two, four, six, all of TNG, and I would try to fight to watch one, the motion picture, because I do like the motion picture too. If I had to let it go, I'll let the motion picture go. But I want to watch it. And then the J.J. Abrams Star Treks. I probably, I I, I guess I would take two thousand nine maybe. Because it's kind of fun in a way, and it's not it's not canon kind of. It's part of a different timeline, so whatever. But it's kind of fun. So 2009, I might take. So if I can include this into that category, then that's what I'm looking for. If I I want to buy Picard season three on Blu-ray and put it next to my other Star Trek Blu-rays, and I want to say, I want to pretend Star Trek season one and two of Picard did not happen. And I won't watch them. And that's fine. Because you don't need to, probably, from what I understand. So I can watch all the movies. I can watch the TV series. Watch all the movies. And then when I get to Star Trek Nemesis, and I finish Star Trek Nemesis, and I've watched, I've watched all the TV shows again, and I went through all the movies, I can throw in Picard Season 3 and watch this beautiful send-off. I saw the beautiful send-off in All Good Things. Then the movies kind of changed the taste a little bit. But this, Picard Season 3, finalized it again for me. That is what we're looking for, right? That's essentially what we're looking for. And if that happens, I will suck and fondle Terry Metalis on Twitter. Because it means that much to me. This sounds weird. But in the end, listen, if he if it doesn't, if it doesn't do amazing, it's a six or a seven. Listen, Picard seasons one and two are like fours and fives or something like that. So if Terry Metalis pulls off a seven, even if it's not an eight or a nine, if he pulls off a seven, I still, maybe a 6.5 even, I'll still feel that I'll definitely be very thankful for him for having tried as hard as he could to save this and do the right thing because all the Star Trek fans do have a different idea of Star Trek a little bit we all have kind of a wavering idea of it like you know what I mean some people like the darkness of DS9 and some people like that the more you know calm and re relaxed version of TNG in a way and more uh, exploratory part of TNG um, some people like the grit now of the new stuff not really i'm looking on paramount and i every everything t uh, the next generation involved gets over a million views everything star trek discovery gets 300,000 or less everything else gets less than that so there's no denying that discovery it seems like discovery star trek discovery has about a half a million fans maybe maybe not even maybe like 300,000 300,000 to a half a million people seem to really enjoy discovery 
And it seems like Star Trek The Next Generation or Star Trek Picard, although Picard's a little bit of an asterisk because it's not really TNG anymore and people didn't really like it. But originally, when Star Trek Picard first came out, I think that they had the, the interest of a couple of million of people. About two to three million people cared about Picard coming back. I think after they saw some of the, some of it, then half of those people dropped away. And now you're looking at an audience of about a million or a million and a half. So you have about a million and a half possibilities to watch Star Trek Picard Season 3. Possibly more. Maybe. Um, but Discovery certainly seems to be under a half a million, if not under 300,000. Prodigy seems to be you know, kind of around that same thing, about a half a million people watching that, maybe, if not. Lower Decks, again, the same thing. I don't count Star Trek cartoons as canon. I don't. I think that's stupid unless it's very serious. They're, they're not. So I don't count them as canon. I don't really like cartoon stuff. Someone talked about a comedy series of Star Trek. Absolutely no, I don't think so. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So I don't care what the Titan looks like on lower decks and other things. Cause it's not, to me, it's not Canon. Although I do think Star Trek lower decks is awesome. It is such an entertaining cartoon and show. And the fact that it's themed around Star Trek and especially around the TNG era, Star Trek and D space nine era, Star Trek, it is awesome. I love the throwbacks. I love the call outs and things like that. But it, but it is an alternate universe. It's a comedy cartoon universe with the canon of the next generation and the start with taking the canon we know, but bringing the canon we know into a comedy cartoon world. So I like that. I actually like it. Yeah, Lower Decks is better than Picard season one and two. And I don't even like cartoons anymore that much. I don't see it as canon. I think it's dumb that people think that the Lower Decks is canon. Um, I think that's stupid. But I do love the show. And clearly the writers are brilliant. Because, dude, I watched it thinking this is going to be stupid. And I was entertained by it. So I got to give it to Lower Decks and Paramount for that. Lower Decks is really pretty good. And I, I kind of like Strange New Worlds. I've enjoyed it. It's not the best. kind of reminds me of TOS and... and the original series isn't my like favorite, favorite Star Trek, the style of it. And so we're seeing that sort of style of that being brought into the modern era. And so like I, that's why I don't love it, love it, but I, I do like it. So Strange New Worlds is the best new Star Trek, in my opinion, uh, that we've seen. And I would say Strange New Worlds for me is probably at about a... I gave episodes a score of about six to about a 7.5 I think so right now Strange New Worlds is in the 6 out of 10 to 7.5 out of 10 category for me nothing was good enough to propel it into a higher grade but nothing was low enough that we're in Picard range which pains me to say so Star Trek Strange New Worlds is really pretty good for a first season of Star Trek maybe it will get better I hope I just hope it doesn't get worse but if Picard Season 3 can be better than Strange New Worlds, I'm telling you, man, I will blow Terry Metalis. And he's probably running away hearing that if he were to hear that, which he wouldn't. But he would never uh, hear this probably. But maybe if I put this on my main channel with 70 million views and my, you know, hundreds of thousands. You know, because I, I, we don't have hundreds of thousands of subs on this channel. This is a tiny channel. This this one of my channels. I've got a couple other channels with 10,000 subs and then I've got my main channel with, you know, almost what 70 73,000 subscribers. So I will put my first review of Picard when it comes out in February, maybe on there too, but I'm concerned. I I just wish there was a way to to <laughs> to manipulate if I was able to manipulate people, I would manipulate Paramount into releasing this now. I also would would ask them to release what I would really enjoy is if they would release the first episode or a couple episodes now and maybe on some point where there's a cliffhanger release the following seven episodes or whatever but maybe that would be too horrible like to wait that long but I just man I am just destroyed that we have to wait until February 
to see this. It feels like torture. I mean, Stranger Things was torturous, but the reason why I'm saying this is Stranger Things is awesome. Every season has been great, I think. And so getting to the new new season, yes, you're excited and, oh my God, we have to wait so long, I, I know. But you know that you love it. This is really debilitating because I've wasted my time and I'm, I'm getting angry. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm getting angry at, at seeing trailers and being excited and then Picard coming out and me hating my life. And now here we are again with Terry Metalis is a different guy. Maybe he did it right. And oh, it looks dark though again, but maybe, uh, and now you got to wait till February. And what if it's bad? I'm worried that I'm going to be a bad person if I don't like it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I am worried that if this is not good, that I am going to be a toxic pile of crap. And I don't, and I, that's not the way to be. And that's, a, that's not what Star Trek teaches people. And yes, I've got mental problems probably <laughs> like, like to say something like that. But dude, I'm telling you, if I, if this is bad and I wait till February to see this and I watch it, and it's bad or it's just I I don't even know man I am just <sighs> Star Trek used to make me happy now it traumatizes me I I can't even believe that we act like this as grown adults I'm 38 years old and I I I act like a child oh I didn't like the show my life's over oh I didn't like the show Oh my, I'm like, I'm depressed now. Like what's wrong with me? What's wrong with us? But I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It means that much to me. I'm not going to lie. Not everything is great. You make mistakes. Things don't always work. You know, everybody's not going to love it the same way. That's understandable. It's the things that you know you shouldn't do or that you didn't know you shouldn't do that make me upset. You should have people that know Star Trek working on Star Trek. And that's what makes me upset. I hope that at some point in, in the series, Jordy, his eyes malfunction, his implants malfunction, and he has to put on the visor for like an hour or, or he uses the visor for some reason. I think that'd be really cool to see him in the visor again for a little bit, but that's just me. I know LeVar is probably sick of, has been sick of the visor for a long time and didn't ever want to wear the visor again after 1995 or whatever it was, 94, 93 actually, I think. But I think it'd be kind of cool if uh, we see him with the visor again, just to kind of sync up the character a bit. But that's just, a, that's a little cherry pick thing that, that doesn't really matter if we don't see that who cares? But I mean, it's just a little thing that I'd love thrown in there. But uh, I understand if it wasn't, because that's just a, that's just something I thought about just now. Like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of cool. He's like, I can't see like something, the shock, the the shock wave or whatever happened. Just as mal- my eyes are malfunctioning, um, I need to. And he goes and gets his visor. Like, like I I still keep I, I don't know, I keep it. He has it stored in his uh, quarters. Something like that. Just to know he has it still type of thing. Um, Or maybe there's something the visor could have seen that his eye implants don't see. But I don't know. I think he's established that he still has those powers, essentially, uh, from the visor in his eyes. Because he, he, he scans with his eyes, I believe, in maybe first contact um, in, in a scene, I believe. So we see that his eyes have this same kind of power his old visor did but i don't know um you know and, and in a way when jordy although jordy was you know blind he kind of had a superpower essentially because he was able to see you know thermal radiations and all kinds of other radiations and things and pick up stuff that other people couldn't see so he could perceive jordy could perceive things differently than others but he could also perceive some things uh better than others and that was you know and I used the word perceive to pay homage to the perceivers or whatever uh, that they were going to call you know Jordy and Data originally um, 
so yeah, um, I'm optimistic. I actually really like the trailer. Doesn't mean the show's going to be good, but I again, I like the trailer. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend like, I, I yeah. Only the negatives from the trailer are. I was a little concerned about Worf being a pacifist. I don't know what's up with that, uh, but it seems like it actually might be really cool. So we'll see. More like a Jedi like type of person. That's fine. I also didn't love that it was a little dark but I've been told or I heard rumor that that's the trailer is trying to be dark and that the show is a little bit different maybe um and that's really it I liked everything else and I'm optimistic this could be Picard's son I've been told we don't know kind of looks a little bit like him in a way but uh he could be anybody why would Picard have a son? I mean, it better be explained really well because he's had a son like 70 times now. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, and that's it. I, if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you guys subscribe, like, comment. If you want to email me, you can email me on my other show name, Joe, Cron Joe Cronin Show at yahoo.com or message me down below. I certainly would love to talk to Terry Metalis. Uh, He's been great on Twitter. I've been banned on Twitter, so I can't really speak to anybody anymore on Twitter. Um, but um, I would love to uh, speak with him for a little bit. But, you know, in the end, I just wish it was coming out earlier because I think we're going to torture ourselves till February and it may ruin some of the enjoyment of the show for me because I can't stop watching and thinking about it. But, you know, I'm it's... It's not coming out till February. You got to wait. <laughs> what are we going to do? Riker here says, that, oh, we're all going to die. And I, I do think that that's a little dark for Riker. You know? You should know that I now prefer pacifism to combat. We're all going to die. I love that. I mean, that is... I mean, it's kind of Riker, right? It's kind of Riker. It's it's very Riker from like uh, first contact kind of and, and that sort of thing. And and I like, you know, Riker over the years, I think, becomes more free and more blunt as he gets older, you know, because he, he, he spent so much time not taking command that when he finally becomes a captain, he's got no more BS left over, right? He's so... Like, I'm the captain, and I just tell it like it is, and this is what's going on. So I do feel like he has kind of been developing that way. But that was definitely a McCoy line. You know what I mean? Um, You know, that was very, very reminiscent in a way. And it's different, so I appreciate that, that it's different. But to me, man, does this... And, and I don't mean that they're stealing it and copying it, but what I mean is that the... What I'm crediting here and saying is good is the interaction between Worf and Riker. And they've always had kind of a weird thing. And remember Deanna and Worf and all that sort of thing. And so for Worf, this is very Leonard Nimoy and McCoy. This is Spock and McCoy. Spock saying like, I must tell you now that I am, uh, I will not be fighting if we land. You know what I mean? And McCoy would say something like, great, we're all going to die. Like, <laughs> like, you know, this sort of thing. Like, you know, like th this is so McCoy and Spock. But that's good because what I'm saying is the chemistry. It's a, it's a great chemistry scene. To combat. We're all going to die. <laughs> We're all going to die. <laughs> is, I mean, but that doesn't... It doesn't seem like Riker to say we're all going to die. You know? But I do think Riker's older. He's more grumpy. He's survived so much and been through so much. And now he's older. And it's like... I think he wanted to relax a little more and now here we are and oh, good Lord, we're all going to die. So, you know, that's a little silly and funny and I, I don't see, uh, but I always like, right. But Riker's always had these funny looks and scenes. If you, if you ever watch, like just pay attention to it in the next generation, Riker has some of the funniest little, like, and they're not lines, they're facial expressions. Like when a woman would come on to another guy and the guy would be uncomfortable and the woman would be like, I'll do anything to you. You know, Riker would be in the background like, 
Like, like with his his face would light up. Like, yeah, like, like. So Riker's always kind of had this sort of last word, last look, reactionary, comedic shot that it isn't really talked about a lot on the Next Generation that that Frakes does uh, with Riker. And I, I really have always loved it. So I I liked that about him. So I don't know. I, and I'm sure based on things that happen in the show, this will make more sense in the context of what's going on. Um, You know, it'd be funny. We'll see. But again, I'm worried about seeing these scenes a million times. I love Beverly. You know, um, when I was, you know, when I was a kid, uh, my father who watched the next generation with me died when I was eight, you know, he died before the last season was out. And, and then, you know, the, the racial relationship with, uh, with, um, will with Wesley Crusher and Beverly reminded me of me and my mother, you know? And, uh, I loved Beverly, you know, as a kid, I really did. I loved Beverly. I loved her as a doctor. always loved Beverly. She had, I loved some of the episodes where she was, you know, it's too bad they didn't, they really should have had, I mean, they, there should have been another three seasons of The Next Generation. It's just sad. There should have been three more seasons. We should have had 10 seasons of TNG. And we didn't get that. But that's fine. And so I'm, I'm happy to see Beverly. I hope she's doing something good. I hope she's in medical. I hope she's in Starfleet medical still. I hope, or and if she's not, I hope she's... I hope she's just not doing something completely ridiculous, you know, like she's like a now a secret agent. Like, I hope that's not what's going on, but we'll see. Love uh, Gates. So these are all things that I'm happy about, optimistic about. And I really, really love Plummer's performance as, as this over the top uh, Star Trek trope villain. Some people, it's a negative. They're like, oh boy, another villain, whatever. But I, again, I think that it's a uh, a, a red herring kind of, I hope. But if it's not, I don't know. We'll see. Either way, I can already see from her that she's doing more than Benedict Cumberbatch's Khan character, which wasn't Khan. And the thing is, that was ridiculous because it was Khan. You were in a lose-lose situation because you're playing a character again, and that's just weird and dumb. This is somebody we don't know what's going on here. So we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, what do you think? Comments down below if anybody even sees this. I'm putting this on my tiny, tiny, tiny channel. Um, subscribe if you guys want more. Let me know. Got a couple other video ideas. And um, I talked about how they could bring back uh, Star Trek Enterprise in one of my other previous videos. They might be popping up now to recommend to you. Watch them and uh, like and share and tell everybody and come here. We'll do more discussions. I rambled on way too much in this video. So sorry. Hope you enjoyed it, though. Bye.